Hey everyone, so I want to take this video and discuss my VIC drive circuit. It's on a breadboard, there's good reason for that. In the past I've done these expansive projects. Got a custom double-sided PCB in here that I made. You know, it's all in this nice enclosure. It looks great. Uh, but when I started doing the testing I realized maybe the operating requirements of the VIC weren't what I expected. And also I wanted more adjustability in the circuit. So now I keep everything on the breadboard, makes it easier to make changes, um, make adjustments, modifications, whatever. And here you can see I've got two potentiometers. One controls the voltage amplitude across the primary coil. The other one controls the voltage amplitude of the pulses during the gate time. So when I've got my dip switch selected in the right position, I can use this to control the amplitude of those pulses. Now let's look at the schematic. All right, here's a schematic I drew up in multi-sim. You got your low frequency and high frequency inputs. You got your dip switch here, potentiometer one, which controls the voltage amplitude across the primary coil. Potentiometer two, which like I said, controls the voltage amplitude of the pulses during the gate time. Now one thing important about this circuit is it's falling edge synchronized or falling edge triggered. I've explained that in previous videos. We'll look at it again, why it's important. So if your VIC drive circuit is not falling edge synchronized or falling edge triggered, this is a possibility that the gate signal will actually cut the last pulse short. And that essentially will be a different duty cycle than the rest of the pulses. In my opinion, that could prevent you from obtaining or maintaining resonance at all. And back to the schematic here. I've got four different possibilities across the primary coil, even though I've only labeled here. Let's look at those. All right, so option one, you've got a high signal during the gate time, which means in this case, you actually have current flowing through the primary coil during the gate time. Second option, no currents flowing through the primary coil during the gate time. The third option, you've got a variable voltage uh, amplitude of your pulses during the gate time. And then the fourth option is just a continuous pulse frequency. So these two options here are actually on the same switch. When you adjust the potentiometer all the way down, you get to zero volts. When you adjust it all the way up, you get about 80 to 90 percent of the peak of these pulses. So the one downside to this circuit, and if you look at Stan Meyer circuits and put all the schematics together, you'll actually see the same thing. This part of my circuit is almost identical to Stan's. So you've got essentially two transistors and a diode in series with the primary coil. Knowing electronics, you know you're going to have a voltage drop across each one of those. So when I've got 12 volts applied here, I can only get about 8.5 volts across the primary coil. Um, obviously you can change that by just bumping up this voltage. I take it up to about 15 volts. That's what my ICs are rated for. And as always, I'm still using this dual channel signal generator. Both channels, independent frequencies, independent duty cycles, adjustable from 1 to 99%. And it's got a very good sweep function. So that's it. Uh, I'll try and post that circuit, the schematic, on open source energy. And take it, do what you want with it. Enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.